Today we're going to talk about panning in Pro Tools. Panning is the distribution of a sound signal, either mono or stereo, into a new stereo or multi-channel sound field determined by a pan control setting. Simply stated, panning allows us to control sound in the right ear, the left ear, or anything in between. It helps us to create depth in mixes and spatial relationships between different sounds in our project. Your brain has two sides, a left side and a right side. In the left side, there's nothing right. And in the right side, there's nothing left. So hopefully you heard that panning from left to right in your headphones. And if you didn't, definitely make sure that you have stereo headphones plugged into a stereo jack and that you are listening to this in stereo because it will be important for this lesson. So how do we do this in Pro Tools? First, let's do a quick systems check to make sure we're all in the same place. One, make sure you have a stereo master fader set up for your project. If you forgot how to do that, click on track, new, and create one new stereo master fader and click create. Now that you've got your stereo master fader, make sure that your smart tool is active. Your smart tool is active when the bracket surrounding your toolbar right up here is highlighted blue. If it isn't highlighted blue, click on it once or twice to make sure that it is. The third thing that we want to check is to make sure that you can see your I.O. panel in your track. The I.O. panel is labeled I.O. and it's right here in your track list. If you don't see that, click on this white box right here and make sure that I.O. is checked. Now that we're all in the same place, I've placed one monophonic audio clip into my track and we're going to talk about panning. And it's super easy. If I play this sound, Hey, where are you? It plays directly in the center of my stereo field. I can control where this sound is playing by moving the pan slider, which is located directly beneath the volume slider here in the I.O. panel. If I left click and hold on this panel, a slider pops up. And if I move it all the way to the left, Hey, where are you? The sound comes out of the left speaker. And if I move it all the way to the right, Hey, where are you? The sound comes entirely out of the right speaker. And that's basically it. Panning is that simple. It doesn't always have to be to these extremes. You can have it in smaller increments or values. Hey, where are you? And it allows you to adjust where things are at spatially between the left and right hand sides of your mix. To reset your panning to zero, simply hold option and click on the value in the panning box and it will reset it directly back to the center. In this conversation, both voices are panned directly in the center. Hey, where are you? I'm right over here. What do you want for lunch? It's not lunchtime yet. Yeah, but when it is lunchtime, what do you want for lunch? I don't care. Okay. So both voices are directly in the center, and we can hear the conversation fine, but if we make some slight adjustments to the panning, in this case, I'm going to take the second voice and pan it all the way to the right, and maybe pan the initial voice over to the left just a little bit. Now, if you listen to the same conversation, Hey, where are you? I'm right over here. What do you want for lunch? It's not lunchtime yet. Yeah, but when it is lunchtime, what do you want for lunch? I don't care. Okay. So with this example, we're now creating a greater spatial relationship between the two voices. Maybe now we understand why the first voice doesn't know where the second voice is. Maybe they're in a second room. So using panning in this instance can create a greater sense or awareness of space in the mix that you're working on. Panning doesn't always need to be static. On occasion, we might want the sound to move in the stereo field. We can do this with the use of an automation lane and breakpoints. Click on the bottom left hand corner of a track to open an automation lane. By default, this automation lane is going to be set to volume, but we can change this to be set to panning very easily by clicking on this box 
and choosing Pan. In the automation lane, we're going to see a line. This represents the value of the panning. By default, the automation in the panning lane will display whatever value you have your panning slider set to. In this case, it's set to zero, which is the center. Look to the far left of the volume automation lane. The labels L and R stand for left and right. The further up the line is in the automation lane, the further left the sound is panned. The lower the line is, the further right the sound is panned. Let's listen to an example with the line directly in the middle. To move the line, hover your mouse near the top of the automation lane and it will turn into a downward facing bracket. When that bracket is visible, left click and hold and drag the mouse up or down. This will move the automation line accordingly. If I move it all the way up, the sound will play on the left. If I move it all the way down, the sound will play on the right. This, however, changes the panning for everything, just like using the panning slider does. To create automation, we'll need to use breakpoints. Breakpoints will divide this automation line up into segments whose value can be changed independently. To create a breakpoint, press and hold the command key on your keyboard. When you do this and hover over the line, you'll see that your cursor becomes a hand with a pointing finger and a small plus sign. If I left click anywhere along the line, I can create these breakpoints. When you're done creating breakpoints, release the command key. Now, if you hover over any of these breakpoints, you'll see that your cursor becomes a hand with a pointing finger, only this time with no plus sign. If you left click and hold any of these points, you can drag them around the automation lane, up, down, left, or right, within the segment that you've created. This will allow you to control how the sound is panned and when in time the panning happens. To delete a breakpoint, simply hold the Option key and you'll see a small hand with a pointing finger, only now it has a minus sign. If I left click on any of my breakpoints, I can delete those specific points. If I want to delete more than one point at a time, using my Time Selection tool, which is the other cursor present on this timeline aside from the downward facing bracket, I can simply left click and hold anywhere on the timeline, drag, select all the points that I want to delete, and simply hit the delete key on my keyboard. And that will delete all the points that I had selected. So how might we use this automation? In this example, we have this vehicle driving by. And we have some kind of sense of depth and space just by the nature of the recording and the truck becoming louder and getting quieter as it drives by. But if we add some panning automation to this, we can start to control where it is in the stereo field. So in this case, I'm going to add a couple points to my timeline. And I'm going to have the truck coming in from the left a little bit. as it drives by us further and further to the right. And let's see how that sounds. So now the truck isn't just driving away, perhaps it's going around the turn or around about as it is driving away from us. And so we've managed to create a different effect with very, very minimal automation on the timeline. Timing does matter. If I have these points really, really close to each other and try to achieve the same effect, for sure we have sound that's moving, 
but it doesn't necessarily make sense with the type of vehicle that we're listening to. So you need to be sensitive to the subject while you're doing this type of work. So far, we've only been dealing with the panning of mono tracks and mono files. Panning of stereo files is only a little bit different than that. A stereo track has a left and a right side. So there's actually two panning functions for every stereo track, one for the left side and one for the right side. By default, they're 100% left and 100% right because that's the behavior we're expecting from a stereo file. However, changing the panning of that is identical to changing the panning in a mono file. Simply left click and change where that sound is at in the stereo field. If I wanted this stereo recording here to play all on the left, I'd make sure that my panning for the left channel was 100% left and the panning for my right channel was set 100% left. If I wanted this file to play only on the right, the right channel would have to be set 100% right and the left channel would have to be set 100% right. So it's a little extra work compared to a single monophonic channel, but the behavior is exactly the same, as is the automation. And that's one of a few ways that panning can function in Pro Tools.